So this one was a really interesting read. It, it talks mostly about the role that leaders um, can take when they're in an intergroup, um, and not necessarily when it's conflict, but just in intergroup relationships. Um, and they kind of weed out how often in intergroup relationships, there's often um, the subgroups as well, and that they have their distinct identities. Um, and so this one kind of looks at how um, how these leaders can promote a positive relationship among these subgroups and improve the attitude and decrease the bias that may exist. Um, so their way of doing this was, um, and so this study then, they took two different studies. They, uh, the second one was more of a validation for the first and they did find very similar results. Um, so both of them, they took a, a bunch of graduates, undergraduate students um, in a college in Canada and they had them do a Qualtrics survey where they would answer some questions about demographics and, uh, and then they would give them like a scenario. So the first one, they asked them, you know, about their identity and their subgroup and they gave them a hypothetical question where it would give them, you know, a, an intergroup leader that would either be in subgroup or out subgroup. I think I left off a study too, which is just, again, they did a Qualtrics study with um, psychology students. This time though, they tried to take it out of um, something very specific within like a college setting. They asked them about their city of residence. Um, and then again, did questions to determine their bias and, and their feelings towards the intergroup leaders, um, leader. So the results, um, study one show that an intergroup leader can definitely have an impact on intergroup relations. Um, and even if they're an out subgroup leader, they can be effective in decreasing bias and improving the relationships for, um, for your in subgroup. Um, when, and this was kind of to gauge the bias, when an in subgroup intergroup leader though was selected, there was no change depending on what they did. So this just helps further confirm that like if, that you have a bias towards your in group. If someone from an out group comes in though, it's more effective when they do this inner, uh, inner group relational identity over a collective identity for the superordinate group. Um, study two, again, showed very similar results. Um, had a little bit of a change where, you know, they, um, it, it lowered in group bias for high identifiers. Um, for, uh, for low identifiers, it actually was a little bit of an opposite effect, but, um, but overall, this is this is the main point and main takeaway, um, and and most of the study confirmed that. Um, so both studies supported the theory that an outside group leader can promote those positive relationships um, and and decrease the bias. The value here, though, is is that an intergroup relational identity doesn't take away from the subgroup's distinct identity. So when you look for a collective superordinate identity, at times that can feel threatening. Um, and they can act defensively, be more hesitant to creating a more positive relationship. When you look at it and you say, you, you know, both or, or all of these groups have their own important part to play, they, you um, legitimize them as their own, but here's the way that we can work together positively. Um, it's much more effective. Um, so the main takeaway is that any leader really has an opportunity to do that. Um, the article does talk even on a larger scale, um, internationally or governmentally, but you can also do this within organizations, um, within their unique, you know, departments or units, um, or maybe it's a partnership between multiple organizations. So if a leader can effectively do that where they recognize um, the diverse strengths that are, exist among those groups, but find ways to connect them, um, there will be much more positive intergroup relations and also then more productive outcomes. Very cool study. Yeah, I, I feel like this is highlighting kind of this this idea of what we choose to acknowledge as similarities and what we choose to acknowledge as differences. You know, like making sure that you highlight the the differences, but the the positive differences, right? And then and 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 what makes it different, and and then finding that. I don't know if I'm making sense, but like what, you know, what that similarity is, it, because we, a lot of times we can acknowledge differences that are not necessarily um, something, something that we want, like 
something good, right? Something positive. So we we create more of these subgroup identities that are putting people in boxes and 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 almost like and not finding that shared. So it's like you have to you have to as a leader choose which figure out which ones are best to like differentiate and then and then and then bring together. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And and I think um, you know one of the interesting aspects of this too was create you know trying to take away from like the us versus them or you know and and from a leadership perspective too not being like one of the out group but being a leader for for all groups and I think yeah a big part of that is is um, you know yeah helping them kind of cross those boundaries but also maintaining you know, maintaining their identity and who they are. I, one of the examples that they gave a lot yeah, in the article, yeah, yeah, um, because it yeah, posted yeah, recently, yeah, okay, hold on, hold on, was um, about Donald Trump and how he, you know, often did kind of spur on a further like us versus them mentality. And, you know, it, it kept people in a very strict box and, um, you know, and kind of, so it was really kind of a, a commentary, you know, against that and, and how we really need leaders who are going to be willing to, um, to help bridge the gaps and kind of stop that rhetoric and that narrative of like, you can't work together and still be distinct, you know, like the unity, but, but, have to be everyone coming to our side, we can. But, but the, but the important part, what seems to be here, if I'm understanding this right, is the important part is when you recognize these different subgroups, let's say, you know, in the case of like a political sub, you know, like Democrats and Republicans are subgroups of a larger group, which is called American, right? So when you, but rec but, but, to, but to do the, instead of just going, uh, recognizing stereotypes, and so what Sarah was saying, like negative stereotypes, obviously that can be negative, but if we want to have this intergroup relational type of leader, it's about recognizing the you know in legitimizing both sides and not just saying the other you guys over there we accept you you have to come over here like not just saying that but like actually legitimizing the other side as well and their concerns and their needs and all that stuff as well as your own subgroup um is that right i mean so is that what this is kind of pointing to is like really recognizing each subgroup and their needs and desires or goals and yeah, absolutely. And and when I read this, a lot of what I thought of actually was politics, because I think, I, I think, you know, outside of even just, you know, the leadership or the presidency, you know, a lot of us do really like strictly put kind of Democrats and Republicans into these boxes. And we kind of feel like it does have to be the policies need to be settled on one way or the other. But reality, and that takes me back to that study that I feel like we brought up several times now, but like, we're not as divided as we think you know, and, and finding those areas where we can, where it's okay and acceptable to say that we're very different, you know, there might be different, uh, you know, differences on both ends, but you can still work together, you can still promote things that benefit the American people overall. So I, that's what I, I thought of a lot from this, but it really does go down, I feel like, into every type of facet. I mean, I think organizations really benefit from that type of mentality, too, um, because you can see that develop anywhere where you kind of you know, put people off in boxes, or you have leaders who, you know, who are biased themselves. And, you know, I think it so it's like, it's, it's like less effective to go. Um, the, the, the IT department and the marketing group are like having a lot of conflict, right? Because they just don't seem to like, have, it's, it's, it's less effective to come in and go, Hey, guys, remember, we're all part of the same team here, mm -hmm. right? It's less effective to do that than to actually go in and, and legitimize and go, IT, you know, we see you, we know your concerns, like you're not wrong. And marketing, we hear you, you're not wrong either. We see your concerns. And then from there come to like, okay, how do we promote and legitimize each group's identities uh, in, so uniquely, as opposed to just sort of skipping over those and focusing on like, remember, we're all part of the same larger team. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Because that then yeah. it, and that's kind of what it explained, you know, it kind of creates a more defensive than like, well, then what about my identity? What about the strengths that I have in IT or marketing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just part of this larger team. Like it kind of overlooks all of those, you know, unique strengths. 
Yeah, I feel like it, it's also adhering to the a basic psychological need of being recognized, right? So we, I want to be recognized for what whatever my this subgroup identity that I have in the IT department at this organization. I want you to recognize that first before trying to yeah yeah like acknowledge these differences and my strengths and then lead to some type of similarity discussion yeah because yeah because imagine even on an individual level like if you're if you're working for a even a small company like ours and 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 you're saying i'm having problems with this one individual and if and if your leader were to come to you and say can you just forget those like we're all part of the same team here like let's just if the, it was like it's like dismissing your individual needs and desires you know rather than like oh well, let's actually dive into that and legitimize what you need as an individual versus this individual and then we can talk about being on the same team we had a yeah we had a we did study actually i think in october and we actually did a research uh weekly update thing on it but it was it was similar to this one and they looked at like they looked at intergroup relational identity a collective identity and also a something called a dual group identity and um they they looked at the identity distinctiveness threat of each of these identities um, and found that, you know, and typically past studies show this too, that intergroup relational identity um, typically receives a, a lower identity distinctiveness threat, um, which is why it's more approachable, I think, for people. They have, you know, yeah. This seems to be like a good, if we could develop like some sort of training or presentation on this to help leaders figure out how to embody intergroup relational identities or something that would probably be a good good endeavor well part of so, some of these like key takeaways are acknowledged and are moving from identity to humanity training where we talk a lot about okay. acknowledging okay. differences and similarities but being careful on like which ones you choose hmm. to because like, like that that's that's key, right? Acknowledging differences yeah. that are not going to put us in those boxes so concretely. Do you have Do you have a section in that about uh, just like focused on leaders, like how leaders can help bridge divides at all, or or is it there? Could not, not necessarily, but I feel a lot of this training is is discussion and like dialogue based. So w if that were to come up, it would be something that you know just like the, the conversation. Yeah. Well, but this, so this, so this seems to be like good knowledge, like intergroup relational identities, like just good knowledge, like in terms of putting a label or a theory on it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. I think, I think this is definitely worth, yeah. Highlighting and like, and labeling. Yeah. Yeah.